hey guys, wanted to put a video out and I want to explain I am feeling much, much better today. Thank you, good Lord. Um, as I explained in the last video, um, we've just been getting pounded with sickness, but unfortunately today, uh, our German Shepherd is having more, more issues and we're fixing to take him uh, up to the vet for the umpteenth time uh, to get him checked out. So any prayers or well wishes for Rocky, our German Shepherd, would be greatly appreciated. We love him. Uh, he has saved my life on occasion here in South America and we love him he's a member of our family alright want to talk about today uh, and this will relate to boxing hang on with me it's going to relate to boxing a lot here in a few minutes if you bear with me and uh, it'll get there a lot of people today <clears throat> are backing the thin blue line. Uh, and I, I would like to talk about some harsh realities of that line that are real and 100% factual and verifiable. Now, I want to start this out with a bit of common sense here which seems to be lacking in this world today um you got a uh you work at a precinct in a, bur a bad neighborhood in a bad borough in new york uh, or los angeles you work in a bad ward in LA or something like that. I can get and understand why as a policeman they would be aggressive. Why not as a policeman, I'm not a policeman, but why policemen would be more aggressive and have more bad attitudes and such in areas like that. But even in small areas, small neighborhoods, in sparsely populated areas and states, these, these damn guys are out of line. Now, we had a problem after, really after World War I with policing in the U.S. for about 20 years. Uh, so it's good to look back at history to figure out where the hell you are today. Uh, after World War One, that was the first modern war uh, that consistently brought people back really, really messed up, effed up. Uh, We learned a lesson from that because a lot of these veterans came home and they began to be policemen. Uh, one of my great uncles, one of my grandpa's brothers, was one of them. And uh, he was quite a character. He'd walk around and show you his fist and he'd say, you see anything on these boy? We'd say no. And he'd say, of course you don't. And this was after he was retired. And he'd pull a 38 out of his belt band down there and say, that's because I always use this. He got a little messed up in the war. Uh, tens of thousands did. And they came back to police, fire protect, ambulance protect, and general guarding the people.
I was with people that lived it. That's how I know. But you can go look. <clears throat> old newspaper or paper articles by subject on YouTube will get you good information on that. Uh, we got on uh, uh, after World War II. Guys came home. They didn't hire as many. We're very selective over the guys that were coming back from World War II, Korea, and the Vietnam War. Very selective. In other words, they'd see a veteran application, and they were like, "We got to really make sure this fellow's okay. And he's able to police psychologically." Because these guys come back damaged from war. Um, after all this Desert Storm mess and these other wars in the Mideast, speaking from a U.S. perspective, they just started hiring these guys as they were coming back home. They were begging them to apply. They replaced bad officers with some of these officers, and a lot of these officers that they replaced bad officers with were worse. And these guys slowly got in the uh, positions of sergeant, lieutenants, captains, police chiefs, sheriffs, uh, departments in the hierarchy and these people have not only damaged the citizenry but they have also left a cancerous culture in policing where it is now the cops versus all people and I want you to know, you cannot let the other 99% go for the 1% that would really stand by, lose their job, lose their pensions to fight to protect your constitutional rights when they are infringed upon. Uh, so you can't take the 1% and build up the 99% with it. It's never worked in history and it won't work today. Nothing's new under the sun here. Damn it, nothing. It never has worked, it never will work, and it's a problem we have today in the United States. A lot of these body cams are get released more often. Uh, we're seeing that, the citizenry, has a telephone camera in their hand. We're seeing a lot of that. The only cases we hear, we typically hear about uh, are major abuses that they would perpetrate. And it's usually a racial thing. Uh, a white cop on a black kid, uh, a black cop on a white kid, things of that nature. They're the stories that, that you typically see, but they're not the typical story. That would be the atypical stories. Uh, the stories that happen a lot less, but they get all the attention. And uh, But stories that do happen constantly now is these idiots can't seem to find the right house. They'll get a search warrant for a house, go in blasting, and almost killed a one-year-old little baby the other day. Uh, in a state and it's not being broadcast out the biggest problem going today is the uh, police department sheriff's department F, up to uh, state troopers SBI FBI's can't seem to find a correct address So it's systemic in the justice system because the people that are handing these search warrants out are handing them out too quickly and too frequently and not 
uh, scrutinizing them because the court uh, uh, system should catch is this the right address or is it not to where they're okaying uh, the, these gangs called policemen nowadays to go bust up into. So one of the biggest problems is a uh, uh, they can't find the correct address when they go to bust up in on somewhere. Going to the wrong house, going to the wrong park, going to the wrong trailer, or going to the wrong business. Uh, and that should show you the state and the, the smarts of police in general right now. Uh, it's F the citizenry and blast in and they don't care and they've got uh, these immunities where they're not prosecuted for the bad they do out there and that needs to change 100% they should have no more protection than an average citizen has out here zero more uh, and any a extra protection they need, they need to change that to where all the citizenry has the same extra protection. It's as simple as that. Now, let's talk about why I'm now calling them gangs and gang members. Uh, years ago, we were taught that to these gangs were, of course, they weren't around where I lived and where I was born and reared up. But uh, we were taught to spot these people by tattoos all up and down the forearm. They'd be very similar in nature to their other gang members. Uh, up the necks, everywhere. Uh, police have them. They're similar in nature. One police department... Every single officer had a skull tattoo, same skull tattoo, the males and the females, on their arms. Uh, they wear gang colors. They're uniformed. Uh, gangs are uniformed. Uh, gang over here wears red. Gang over here wears blue. Gang over here wears green. what gangs do they tattoo themselves and they got their gang colors and that's what the police do they tattoo themselves and they have their gang colors several good police have been surfacing lately and admitting that because they don't like it because they're decent uh, policemen uh, you never see a woman come up uh, but some of the men have been coming up. They're getting tired of it. They've got good hearts. They're sick of it. Uh, they are hiring messed up in the head individuals that are typically women that believe they are men and go gendered as men. And they're women that are married to other women. And when they go and do something wrong, that they're typically the most aggressive today, not the messed up psychologically, psychological Purple Heart recipient. Uh, it's the messed up psychological deviant. And uh, i seen a video, a woman just gets out of the car, a guy is at his swimming pool in swimming, and a guy comes up with a hoodie on, pointing at a gun, trying to rob him. The guy runs away, calls the police. This he, she shows up and basically beats the crap out of the guy, pistol drawn, uh, come close to shooting the victim, and didn't want to hear about the hooded guy that was didn't care. Said she didn't care. She said, I told you to get your your effing ass on the ground. And the criminal got away. The guy in the hooded sweatshirt got away. 
the guy in his swimming trunks that had nothing on him got slung to the ground, tased, pepper sprayed, and threatened to be killed several times. Now, the woman officer now is suing back the police department, which has fired her because she's done these instances repeatedly. So finally, they get around to firing her. And she's putting a lawsuit against the department, a discrimination suit, claiming, well, it's because nobody liked that I go as a ma- identify as a man and that I'm uh, as a woman, I'm married to another woman. And she's just complete fruit loop. They got all these voice conversations between her and other officers and uh, other people. And she's just crazy. So, I'd be very careful on backing 1% of the, the blue boys, the boys in blue, the heavily tattooed gang members, to just backing the good 1% of them and allowing, uh, speaking good about the other 99% that are repeatedly in road piracy today, uh, of seizing the citizens' things and then going down themselves or having family members go down and bid to buy these things cheaply that they want. Uh, rampant in the U.S. right now. Go look. To, I don't like them. Uh, let's go over there and beat the shit out of them. Uh, so it's just a, a large cancer in that. And I, I can no longer back them. I can back some of them. But the whole and the group is so rotted. I cannot back them. I can't stay here and say, I back the police. I back a very small minority of the police. That's who I back. And I will express it as such every single time. Now let's get how this relates to boxing. Um, over the years, we've we haven't had so many run-ins, but we've had people around us that have. And when I smell out one of these punks, and that's what they are, they're just gang member punks. Uh, that's another thing, go, uh, you know, they do Freedom of Information Acts and just get cameras on specific body cams on specific days just to hear what they're talking about amongst one another, and it'll make you sick. It'll make you sick how these guys are talking about good people, you know. Yeah, let's get over there and shut that church down. Man, I slung that pastor down. I told him he wasn't going to do nothing. Ha, <laughs> you know, crazy stuff. Well, I knew that guy hadn't done nothing wrong, but I was going to make something up because I didn't like him questioning me. All right. So, we've had situation after situation after situation after situation. And we've probably had I'll say 40 to 60 situations over, I'll say, past five years uh, in the U.S. or even in Colombia. Here. And I always invite a bully cop to come to the gym. And typically I just sat back and they're like, well, what do you do? I, said, well, we're, I train boxers. We, uh, that's what we do. Um, well, heck, I'd like to train, and then I go into, we would love to have you, and as a matter of fact, it'll be free for you for the extent of your visit. Come on down. And then I tell them, uh, be prepared, though, because in this free class, sparring is mandatory. And, uh, you know, I just, I let them know. Clear, clear, clear out. You'll learn how to 
throw down. You're, it's mandatory. It's obligatory. You're going to have to spar. And it ain't going to be easy. And without fail, every single one of them say, well, I'm coming. I'm coming. Because they're tough guys, you see. But then you find out they don't never come. They don't never come for the free classes because they're really not tough guys. They're good at lying. And that's another thing that needs to be disqualified in policing is the encouragement, the freedom, and the ability to set the citizenry up by lying to the citizenry. And when that was <clears throat> deemed a total legal and encouraged process from the judicial side of it, that helped aggravate a lot of the problems. So we've been, I'll say the past five years, 20 to 60 officers have been invited. Uh, uh, even if it's an officer that I have no no beefs with and I kind of like the guy I'll say you can come down free but we got we got several guys they just really you know they've had a problem or two here with the police and when you come in you know check being a policeman at the door as soon as you get to the other inside here uh, some of these guys might not appreciate it and uh, that might like to bust you up a little bit, smack you around a little bit. Uh, but even the good ones that I like, that I say, come on, but check yourself at the door. Uh, leave that police shit on the other side of the threshold of the door. Don't bring it inside here. You get your face bashed in. You know, if there's any ad police attitude in these walls. Not one. Not one guy over the past five years has come. Before then, one did come. And he was some what I call a half-assed judo expert. And he got the shit beat out of him. And he only came the one time. And he came in with a, with a policing attitude. He didn't walk out with a policing attitude. He walked out with, I can handle this. I can handle anything. You know, the, the macho going out the door. But he never came back. Because these guys are just like criminal gang members. They're one and the same. They're both criminal groups. And the criminals don't seem to come out of the gangs to do the work and to develop better hearts and better attitudes. They can't do it. Have no real intent to do it. Only reason why one of them would come would be to, to, to say, hey, I'm a bad dude. I was over there. So uh, I'm encouraging the Encouraging the citizenry in Western Europe, but especially in the United States and Canada, to investigate on YouTube and other areas online at what policing has turned into, and it's not a good thing. Uh, you sit back and you say, they tell you, well, it's because courts, well, the courts is not the police. Tunnel vision yourself and look at the police. Uh, you know this when you call and if, if you ever call and you need them for help, they are moving slow. Uh, he had a red shirt on. You can get in a five minute argument uh, with an officer when you've just been robbed and you know that the guy had a green shirt on and the officer's trying to tell you he had a red shirt on but the officer wasn't there. Things as ludicrous as that. So, we all need to be pushing for, uh, we got to have police. Um, 
but we need to be pushing for reforming the police and the judicial system uh, because both are broken and only if you're talking to a lawyer does one of them work only does when you're talking to a policeman does one of them work um, but we all know that it's just not working today so we need to be standing up and getting into that and uh, once these bullies get placed in a situation uh, we used to could get them in a, get get a bad one in a jam rough him up and correct his attitude no different than we could a young boy the same thing uh, but today you can't do that they won't come in they know that the correct it's coming and they won't come face it and that's a very sad thing so uh, we're not blanket uh, pulling for promoting that thin blue line uh, we are only interested in the good officers that we know are good or that our friends or our neighbors personally tell us this is a good guy he's all right he's one of us he's one of the citizens um, so i just wanted to point that out to everybody and i will tell everybody be careful when you get around them one of the most dangerous things you can do today uh, is go down an alleyway in a bad neighborhood in the middle of the night with cash flapping out your back pocket in plain sight. And one of the other most dangerous things you can do is dial 911 and sit and wait on the police to come. Because you don't know what you're going to get. It could be one miscue on that radio and they come out and blow your head off and you be the one that's gotten hurt very badly. So be careful out there. Be careful with it. Be careful. Um, I wouldn't pick up that phone to call the cops unless it was monumental in me. Because you never know what you're going to get. 